Hey, it's Andy from PracticalMaker.com. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, completed Mac Arduino web app. Uh, so basically the Arduino right now is hooked up to an Ethernet shield and the Arduarium board. Um, and we have the web app running. You can see PracticalMaker.com um, and we just do some configuring. So we're going to go into settings first and as you can see the add address select Arduino is all the same um, uh, there's a couple bigger changes uh, you can see down here we've got some more buttons and stuff so we've got discover one wire addresses and you can see here that it uh, so all the commands basically reply with uh, you know some data it might be something that's useful like uh, discover two one wire devices or it just might be a success message for the most part, um, if you see this uh, little blue uh, pop up, then it means the command worked. Otherwise, it uh, usually means that something went wrong. Um, for the most part, the anything that should have a pop up has a pop up, although uh, the code has gotten quite big, I may have missed something. So, discover one wire devices is a pretty cool command because then you don't have to worry about uh, which addresses this uh, temperature sensor is and, and uh, what address that temperature sensor is it just does it for you and so if you want to see how many you have stored one wire addresses you can see here it pops up uh, one wire addresses and it gives you a list right now I store five uh, just because the Arduino has limited EEPROM space uh, we may in the future um, enable it to uh, use an external EEPROM uh, but that, that Far, that's pretty far in the future and I don't think it's needed right now so you can see here we have two good ones 40 is uh, the decimal version of 0 by 28 which means it's a one wire um, device um, and then these last ones 25s and zeros basically mean that there's nothing there uh, the set Arduino address isn't really used yet um, it's actually going to be used for uh, things like an XP shield so if you have five Arduinos um, in your in your home you just um, say okay Arduino address 110 you do uh, this and and only the one with address 110 will execute those commands uh, so you can s change that although not really used yet uh, another important thing is the current time um, I thought this was important to display in the settings because this way you can kind of verify whether or not uh, your clock is accurate. So right now it's saying it's Tuesday 8.32.31.6.28.2011. It's actually 8.36 so we'll uh, change this uh, in a bit to correct it. Um, this just helps you know what time is on the um, Arduino and whether or not you need to change it. So as before, we've got uh, a whole bunch of, of uh, options here. So we'll start with um, digital control. Now, very similar to the last video, you select whatever pin you want, on, off, and pin mode. There's also a nice little PWM slider. So you can just slide this over to a PWM value, and it will uh, basically set an alert to set pin 9 to status, 185 and so you can just you know move that around to whatever you want the PWM value to be so we're at 231 and this goes from 0 to uh, 255 uh, pin mode input output um, it stores the pin mode in the EEPROM so you only need to set this once and it will remember what you set the next time it, it starts up um, <clears throat> the macros have undertaken quite a huge change one of the uh, feedback well, the most feedback I got was can we not have to remember macro numbers uh, so what I did was basically the Arduino handles um, assigning, a no like assigning a number to the macro and it will just store it wherever the uh, first free macro space is so you actually don't don't need to do anything except to find a macro name and the parameters so if we do a digital macro um, let's say digital 
dig one. Now you cannot put um, numbers in this, okay? Because this is stored in the Arduino. Um, so if you put a number in it, it's going to confuse it uh, because I don't uh, I don't convert all of the characters into chars. So just no numbers in that, and you'll be fine. So we're going to watch pin five for a high output pin 9, output action 100. As you know, an output action, if it's a PWM pin, can be from 0 to 255. If it's a regular pin, it's 0 for off, 1 for on. Output time on is just um, <laughs> basically a delay. Uh, if you put 5 in there, that would delay for 5 seconds. So we're going to save this for later. So it will reply successfully set digital macro. Analog macros are the exact same. You give it a name, so we'll give N1. So it's uh, nine characters max. A actually, I think you could store 10 characters, but just to be safe, um, just do nine for now. We'll watch uh, analog pin two for a 500. Um, now, if you're in a mobile phone, these actually have little helpers uh, for you. I'm on the computer right now. Um, but one is less than, so we'll say less than 500. Uh, turn output 9 on forever. And so we'll save that. Successfully set up analog macro. We have temperature macros. So just uh, in, in the case of an aquarium tank, we're going to call this uh, low temp. Low Oh, and no spaces. Uh, so we're going to remember when we did the discover one wire sensors. They start at zero. So the first sensor is sensor zero. Second is sensor one. We're going to check out sensor zero uh, for less than 7,800. So 7,800 is actually 78.00 degrees because it's uh, easier to send that way than work with a decimal. So if it, it falls under 78 degrees, let's turn pin 9 on. Okay, now for the other side of the aquarium temperature control, we go high temp. Okay, sensor 0, but this time if it's greater than 80 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this can be configured with Celsius as well. Um, in the uh, Mac Arduino code, there is a defined Celsius. You set it to 1 and uh, you're working in metric. And so basically if it goes over 80 degrees, turn pin 9 off. And uh, so basically you could set these, I like to set these actually to um, below 79.50, so 79.5 degrees, turn it on. If it goes above 80, turn it off. Uh, this is just an example. We're going to check it out later. Setting the time on the uh, real-time clock, extremely simple. It's in 24-hour time. Uh, so right now, we were a couple minutes off uh, when we checked, so we're going to set it correctly now. 8, uh, 41, second, we'll say 20, day 28, day of week, was Tuesday. We'll say like day 3, day 2. I don't know what the day of week is, just play around with it. Month 6, year, last two digits, so it's 11. And we save that, and it pops up with uh, what you sent to it, so you can actually verify that it went through correctly. And so we're going to just go to settings and check that this is set. So, oh, I'd, I guess Tuesday is day 3. But we set it to 841, which uh, seems like everything worked. Um, Real-time clock macros, the same as any other. You give it uh, a name, so we'll call it, uh, if in the uh, aquarium, we'll call it lights. And let's say we want it to start at 8.30 and finish at, uh, say, 6 o'clock. Whoops. 8.30. There we go. Hour stop, hour 18, which is 6 p.m. Minute stop let's say 645 and so let's turn pin 9 to on 
Now there's also a way to fade these in. Um, I haven't added it into the web app yet, but um, you'll be able to actually fade it in over the course of an hour and fade it out over the course of an hour. Uh, lighting is extremely tricky to do, so we're going to add some advanced uh, lighting controls in um, over time. So like storm modes, moon, moon lighting. Most of this is going to be designed for LEDs only. Um, so sorry if you have metal halides or T5 bulbs. <laughs> Those will only do on and off. So we're actually going to save the real-time clock macro and it comes back at you with what you set. So hour start, minute start, um, action and all of that. And one thing you didn't see before is the LCD setup. So there's lots here and lots more to come. Uh, so basically we have um, four things that you can do right now. You can display the time on the LCD, so we're going to display the time. It replies back. Uh, if you want 12 hour or 24 hour time, you just on is 12 hour, off is 24 hour. Time position, so where you want the time displayed on the LCD. So let's say we want uh, row 0, I think it's column 12 for my 4x20. Nope. Something like this. We'll just display it at 0, 0. Um, you can just play around with this to figure out where you want it. And so now we move on to the temperature settings. Uh, display sensor 1. So basically when you do the discover one wire devices and you find your one wire addresses um, you can configure how they are displayed on the screen so if temperature one is your main tank um, like the main tank reading that you want to display and it's attached to sensor one or uh, sorry sensor two so you would actually put uh, sensor one sensor number as one because the sensors start at zero and so we set sensor uh, number you can't see it it pops up but it only pops up at the top so you won't see these and you have row and column so let's call row one column zero oh that didn't work row two all right moving on the temp two settings are the exact same uh, so let's say temp sensor 2 was your uh, sump, uh, sump temperature. So you would turn this on and it's attached to the first sensor. So you would give it uh, sensor number 0 and so set sensor 1 sensor number and uh, set the position row 3 column 0 and you're done. If it's displaying the temp 3 but you don't have one hooked up, just toggle it on and toggle it off and it will uh, be gone. Uh, so lastly we have pH 1. I think I'm going to add actually pH 1, pH 2 and ORP 1 um, in the future. So you go display pH 1 on and you just give it a row and a column and set pH 1 position. And that's it for the LCD setup. I mean, uh, you're basically um, done. Everything that you want to display on your LCD, there'll be more as time goes on and people give me suggestions, but for now I think this um, will get most people started. So we have the same read values. Um, the only thing that's different is we added a pH value in. So if you want to read the pH value of pin 2, for example, if you have a BNC sensor shield, uh, you can just read that and it will pop up. pH value is 7. Now here's where I think the biggest um, request was. List the macros that we set up. So you remember that we set up a bunch um, earlier. So we're actually going to list the macros. And you can see here that it lists them, keeps going on. Um, you need to wait at least 30 seconds for this to complete because uh, if you start doing other stuff you're going to 
most likely crash your Arduino. So I've tested this many, many times, and as long as you wait 30 seconds, you should be fine. So you can see our first one, macro name, dig1. So watch pin 5 for a high. If true, turn pin 9 to 100 for 0 seconds. The 0 seconds, as you know, means just turn it on forever. So we have analog 1. If pin 2 is less than 244, I guess we have a problem with uh, that one right there. Uh, turn pin 9 to 1 for 0 seconds. Uh, we have low temperature. So sensor 0 is less than 78 degrees. Turn pin 9 on and high temp. If sensor 0 is greater than 80 degrees, then turn pin 9 off. And we have our lights macro. At 8.30, turn pin 9 to 1 until 18.45. Uh, so you can see these little X's here. If you want to, instead of having to do a full reset like you had to do before, if you just want to get rid of uh, a couple of macros, it's really simple to do. You just click the X, so we'll delete that macro, deleted that macro, and all we're going to do is control the temperature and the lights. And so if we go back and we go into list macros, you can see low temp, high temp, and lights. The other two are deleted. Uh, now the, the cool thing about this is that instead of just overriding the entire memory space, which would burn out the EEPROM uh, quicker, we just write uh, basically one byte to EEPROM, which is an enabled bit. <clears throat> if it's one, then that macro is enabled. If it's zero, then it's not. And the Arduino knows that it can store a new macro there. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, lots of lots of work has went into this, and I uh, um, there's lots more going to be coming. We're going to be doing Patch Bay and uh, a couple other um, online uh, data logging, as well as some more LCD stuff and and macros uh, as time goes on. But right now we have something that can control an aquarium or an aquaponics system. There's a lot of interest uh, from the aquaponics community. So I do hope you enjoyed the video and as always um, comments and feedback is welcome because from your feedback is where I get all these ideas to put into the code. So I will talk to you next time.